Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. In this video we're going to talk about fixing alignment issues between the transmission bell housing and the block. So this repair has a pretty interesting story. A friend of mine has this awesome 1970 Super B with a 446 pack in it. It is a beautiful car, but it wasn't running too great. Last summer he brought it by and I did some work for him. I adjusted valves, the lash, uh, carburetors, the six-pack wasn't tuned properly, uh, had to shim the rocker rails to get the valve geometry correct, spent a lot of work getting that, getting that all properly set, and when I was done, the thing ran awesome, so we took it for a ride. We're getting ready to go, put it in reverse, and the first indication there was a problem with the transmission was when you put it in reverse, it was grinding. Something was holding up the shaft, the spline shaft in the transmission. Couldn't get in reverse, but it went after a few grinds, went back in. So we go for a ride, and first uh, took it a little slow to make sure everything was okay. And he was really happy with the performance of the motor. It was really, really uh, hot. It was running really well. So I told him, you know, put your foot into it. Let's see what he can do. So he takes off from a dead stop. He puts his foot into it, and it is pulling hard. He goes from first, slams it into second, pushes into clutch, and goes to push it into th uh, third gear, and he just can't get in. Miss third gear. Jam it. He had to jam it a little bit coming out. It was really tight, and I said, hey, you got a real transmission alignment problem. There's something there we should look at. Uh, and he had a, just a kind of a, it was a standard, almost a standard uh, four-speed, uh, Mopar four-speed, nothing really special. And uh, he told me he ordered from Brewers Racing an 883, uh, 883 transmission from Brewers. And uh, he was on a list for like two years to get this transmission. He got confirmation he was going to receive it. And, I, and he received it over the winter here. And I told him, when you get the transmission, before you put it in, let me come over and we're going to check it out. So the first thing I did, I put my dial indicator with magnetic base on the drive shaft or on the spline shaft of transmission and I wanted to check the run out between the shaft itself and the mating surface or the ring where the transmission fits into the bell housing. Now as I rotate from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock you can see that there's some run out there uh, going back up to 12 o'clock where it zeroes back out and going down to 9 o'clock there is some run out there. So uh, the point of doing that is this. There is some end play. When you lift up the end of the transmission shaft, there's going to be some play there, five thousandths, which is why you can have about five thousandths offset of your bell housing to your crankshaft without having any issues. But here's the real problem. This is the pilot bushing that was in the crankshaft. You can see this thing was really, really lunged. It was burnt up. It had a flat spot on it. And I suspect it was spun inside the crank uh, when he was shifting or when he was really hard shifting whatever it caused a flat spot and it spun inside the crank. So before we did anything I wanted to measure where the center of the bell housing was in relation to the crankshaft on the back of the block. In order to do this you need to take one bolt out of the flywheel so you can mount the magnetic base for the dial indicator. Then you can use a pry bar or a screwdriver to rotate the engine clockwise through the entire rotation 360 degrees and take measurements at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock and back at 12 o'clock. So let me explain very simply using some pictures what I'm trying to accomplish here and what the measurements showed. Now here is a mechanical drawing of the back of the block and where the center of the crank is we put a center mark. Then we take the bell housing, put it over the block and put a center mark for that. So now we have two circles. The black circle is the crankshaft the red circle is the hole on the bell housing. So let's zoom in on this to make it a little easier to understand. After taking measurements at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and back at noon, I did it twice. This is what I found. From the center line of the crankshaft, the bell housing was actually off to the left 13 thousandths, and it was up vertical 14 thousandths. Now that reading is TIR, or total indicated runout, and the actual dimension that it's off is half. So it was off to the left, six and a half thousandths, and it was up seven thousandths. Now those numbers are really lucky because we are going to recenter the bell housing back onto the block and the offset dowel pins you use come in seven thousandths increments. In order to do that, first we have to remove the old dowel pins. Usually they come right out, but if you have to, you put some vice grips on them and a little heat on the cast and they'll pop right out. 
Then we put in place an offset dowel pin. You can see on the end this is stamped .007 and the side that has the stamping on it is the direction or the side of the pin that is offset. So in order to get the bell housing back where it needed to be, the upper left hand dowel pin was set at 3 o'clock and the one in the lower right hand corner was set at 6 o'clock. After mounting the bell housing on the block, you go back through the process of rotating the engine around, taking measurements at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock to make sure that the bell housing is centered on the crankshaft. The pins themselves have flats on it so you can turn them very slightly so you can get the bell housing exactly where you need it. This process takes a little bit of time and patience and you might have to go through it a couple times to make sure that you're moving it in the right direction and that you get it nailed as close as possible. Here are the measurements after we finished. At 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock it was zero dead nuts and at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock the TIR was six thousandths or half of that is three thousandths total. Since the tolerance on the holes of the bolts is two thousandths and the location of the dowel pin on the block is actually two thousandths. Three thousandths is much less than the tolerance that it could be off so we're going to leave it just where it is. Now the bell housing is perfectly centered or almost perfectly centered on the crankshaft and sliding the transmission into the bell housing with the spline shaft going into the pilot bushing it worked perfect. So if you're having some transmission problems or if you're building a car and you're mating the transmission to the bell housing, always take some measurements to make sure that transmission is centered on the crankshaft right into that pilot bushing. It'll save you thousands of dollars down the road and a lot of aggravation. This project worked out great. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. <music>